Welcome to today's episode of the Vanagon Refrigerator Diaries. Those of you who know these Vanagon Dometic 182 refrigerators know that they're constantly needing a little attention and we're always trying to improve them. So uh, today I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've done to my fridge. This one comes out of a, a 1982 Vanagon. It's one of the older models. And uh, there's a couple things I did. One, of course, we all have trouble with the fans getting old and squeaky and breaking. And so uh, on this one, I decided to put in a couple of uh, open air fans, the non-boxed in ones. I think these move more air, like the original ones. Uh, in this case, I've put in two of them. One down lower on the, uh, on the lower collector there and on the uh, condenser up top as well. These fans are about 20 bucks at Camping World. And they come with their own temperature sensor, which I've bypassed. I've used the original temperature sensor that's up here on the fins. You see the, the clip leads on it right now because I'm bypassing it to be able to show you them running. Um, so that's the original temp sensor. And these two, the brackets aren't quite perfect. They're actually a little bit too long. So you may be able to see that I've drilled extra holes and I've shifted the fans inward toward the fridge so that they won't interfere with the insulation uh, on the back of the van. So I kind of like the idea of two of these. Um, they're relatively quiet. I'm going to turn them on here in a sec. And uh, it's one of the things I like a lot about this fridge is how quiet they are. So you see there's the one and the other one running. And uh, what I've just done is actually, I've bypassed the thermostat to pretend like it's always hot. And I've flipped on a switch that I added on the front. Because some, night, some nights it's just, it's hot out, but you want it quiet. So I've added a little switch here. Uh, you see there, cooling fan, I don't think it's focusing very well. And that uh, is on automatic right now, which is where it would normally be. And if you get tired of the sound of the fans and you want it to be a little less efficient, you just switch it off and they turn off. One other thing I'd like to note is uh, both fans running we're looking at about 145 milliamps so it's a it's a pretty small draw but it's something you know it'll definitely work on your battery in the long run over the course of a week but not something you need to worry about just over a day or two. Uh, so that's the one addition that's the cooling fans and the switch to override them. The other thing is that recently I saw an electronic igniter on a 1990 Vanagon fridge. And so promptly looked online to see if I could buy one myself. And you see here this Model 679 is a replacement, sort of a universal igniter that you can buy. And these are nice because they spark. Once you turn them on, they spark until the flame shows up. And then the... Uh, the ionized air in the flame reduces the resistance. It can measure that. It doesn't spark until the flame goes out again. Then it turns on again. It requires a pretty simple hookup. It's got a ground wire. Uh, that's the one on the right there. Uh, the light wire is labeled L in the middle and plus on the left. So we switch the plus wire. We run the light wire to the ground on this three terminal switch. This switch was two terminals of a switch plus the LED. And conveniently, this small switch I found fits directly into the hole where the later models had the voltage indicator for the flame, the flame indicator. And since I don't have that, it was very easy to just drop it in the hole and, uh, and to add a few wires to, uh, to parallel it up and tie it in with the, uh, with the 12 volt system right in parallel with the power that runs to the fans. The, um, the power draw on this is also pretty small. Let's, let's turn it on here and you'll see it work. So you see the, uh, the LED flashes whenever it sparks, so you know what's happening. Of course, you're pretty likely to hear that anyway when it happens. And if we go around here to the back, we may be able to peek into the burn chamber, which I've opened up. So there you see the spark. So now if I turn on that propane safety, when I just push that button, Oh, you see, it didn't. I didn't hold it long enough. It turns on the flame, and uh, when I let go of it, now the uh, the thermocouple's red hot, and that's keeping it turned on. 
and we see the sparking has stopped. When this is actually sparking, it takes peak current of about 50 milliamps and an average of about 10, which is pretty small. And now you can see when it's running, so when the flame is burning, we're only talking about 35 microamps. So that's a, uh, a real insignificant electrical draw on the system. And if you really cared, you could turn it off once the flame's lit. So we could turn it off here, and now you see it's gone practically to zero. And uh, But, you know, why not? If we leave it on, then if the... Uh, if a breeze comes up, a gust, and it blows it out, this will be there available to, uh, to light it back up again before the safety shuts off. So installation was pretty straightforward. Uh, drilled a couple holes. Uh, left enough clearance so that this piston from the air pump doesn't run into it. That's, I guess, an important point. Obviously, I've removed the, uh, the original piezo that was mounted here. And the... Um, the high voltage wire here, which goes down to the sparker, that one had a round terminal instead of these little .110 inch spade terminals that come on this unit. And I was able to just use some, some electronics pliers. And uh, besides bending the end over, I was able to squash it down so that it fits quite well on the connector. It's very tight. And, uh, you know, hopefully it won't break in the long run, but it feels pretty solid. So that, three wires wired up, a ground wire. Oh, it's important to, uh, to run another ground. This has a ground connection. The power into the refrigerator is not grounded to the chassis. What you're seeing here on the green is actually the AC ground. But the 12-volt negative wire, which um, right now I'm forgetting if blue is blue or yellow. They use these weird colors. Uh, that would be the blue is the ground. Um, that blue wire is not directly connected to the fridge anywhere, so I've added a connection here to a spade terminal that was waiting and uh, directly grounded the circuit like they do on the 91 or the 1990 on the electric start version. So I think that's about it. This is how you can update your fridge for pretty low cost, not a lot of work, and uh, get this cool electronic igniter built in. And uh, I know people have all kinds of opinions on these cooling fans. Um, but now you see what mine are. And uh, I like that. I like the switch to be able to turn it off. Because that's one of the best parts of these old propane fridges. That's why I put up with them is a quiet desert night. You don't hear anything. It's, there's no compressors running. And that's really nice. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.